All right, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bacall, this is Maureen Medad, Yahoo, Ben Yashrael, and you have just tuned in to Living Branch Hebrew Assembly, and we are excited that you are with us. So we are going to um, have a great lesson today. Hopefully, we'll be finishing out our lesson today, and... Um, We'll go ahead to to our next part, or our next lesson that the Father gives us. So if you want to email your prayer request, and I put this on here just because people have prayer requests all the time, you can email it to prayer at living-branch.org. If you just have general questions, you can email those to info at living-branch.org. Now, we do have a witnessing website. Our witnessing website is yahua.co. And our main website is living-branch.org. And we also have a, a resource place where it's hebrewfoundation.org um, where you can go and get um, resource information, videos, and various other things, plat things you can find, our books, all of that type stuff so that would be a good place for you to do some research now um, we are reaching out globally so we have lessons every week we have Friday on Yom Shishi when Shabbat comes in we have at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we have our um, prayer and prophecy night Sometimes we do a lot of praying. Sometimes we give a prophetic word. Sometimes it's a small teaching. So it, it just varies. And on Shabbat mornings or broker Shabbat, we have at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have our Shabbat lessons. So the lessons we've been given are designed to try to help in everyday living. That's what we need uh, the most of our help in everyday living so if you'll notice our theme and how we're uh, going in the lessons we try to deal with things that we deal with on a daily basis <laughs> now um, as far as um, the witnessing website if you haven't requested your bookmarkers you probably need to get some I've been sending out a lot of bookmarkers here lately uh, just wanted we just trying to reach as many people as we can and we can't do it without your help so you know the more people we have passing out bookmarkers the better the effort is now as I was last night I was um, had a uh, interesting dream and it deals with uh, Ruachs and or spirits that come and you'll notice most of us in our daily life tend to deal with more with one particular one or two particular types of spirits more often than none and what the father was showing me in my dreams is that in your lifetime um, sometimes these these spirits can these spirits they're the same for every person might deal with different different uh, type of spirit when they come to you they can come to you through people and people exhibit if you really sit down and anal analyze it um, they exhibit the same type of spirit of ruach towards you that um, can be designed to throw you off course so whatever you're dealing with make sure that you understand and realize what spirits you're most vulnerable to that way you can build up yourself in that area um, because we're getting here close we see the days are growing short and we don't want to miss out on what the father has now we're talking about disobedience the spirit of ruach of disobedience part two we're going through some more examples so let's pray first Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malak HaAlam Father thank you for another Shabbat Father cause us to uh, just 
delight in the Shabbat like never before. Help us to see, Father, you gave us six days to work, but on the seventh day you commanded us to rest. And we cease from all our work, just as you did in the creative order. Now we ask you, Father, give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, memory, that we might comprehend these lessons, and that these lessons might barack our spruaks, that we can be have a closer walk and be just um, perfect as you have called us to be, according to scripture. We say, Toda, Father, in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Aleo to Yahuwah, Amen. So the spirit or Ruach of disobedience, part two. So the first one we're going to um, take a look at, Miss Baka. Hold on, what's, okay, I see now. I'll, I'll get it straight. Okay, the first one we're going to take a look at is going to be King Shaul, King Saul. And we got two we're going to look at from him. Now remember, this this was the first king of Yisrael, or Israel. And I put there first because I wanted to read this because he had a new heart heart and we have to see that so after this new heart obedience is required and we'll see what happens so let's go here let's pull up our um, scriptures here and let's go to first Samuel chapter 10 <laughs> and we'll read here then Samuel took a vial of oil poured upon his head and kissed him and said is it not because Yahuwah has anointed thee to be captain now this word captain is leader or ruler over his inheritance. When thou art departed from me today, then shall thou find two men by Raquel's sepulcher in the borders of Benjamin at Zelzah, and they will say unto thee, The donkey which thou seekest, was thou willing to seek, are found. Donkeys, rather. And lo, thy father has left the care of the donkeys and sorrow for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tobar. Tabor. There shall that uh, there shall meet thee three men going up to Alahim to Bethel, one carrying three kids, another carrying three loaves of bread, another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive at thy hand. After that thou shalt come to the, to the hill of Alahim, where it is a garrison of Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with psalm tree, psalm tree and timbrel and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Ruach of Yahuwah shall come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shalt be turned into another man. So you're going to see here that he's going to get a whole different heart. <laughs> he's going to be a new creature. And let it be when these signs have come upon thee that thou do as occasion serve thee for Allahim is with thee. 
and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offering. Seven days shall thy tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thy should do. Okay, I want you to keep this in mind because this is going to be a part of one of the um, things that he's going to be required to do. Remember, it was seven days that he's supposed to go down there and tarry. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, Elohim gave him another heart, a leb. He got a whole new heart. So he was supposed to be a new man. So from that point on, as he moved forward, he was supposed to operate in obedience, in accordance to this new heart that he was given. And all these signs came to pass that day. When they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Ruach, a spirit of Elohim, come upon, came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that it is come unto the son of Kish? Is Shaul also among the prophets? And one of the in one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Shaul among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place, and Shaul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whither went you? And he said to seek the donkeys. And when we saw that they were nowhere, we came to uh, Samuel. And Shaul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel say unto thee? And Shaul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the donkeys were found, but the matter of the kingdom whereof Shaul, uh, Samuel spake, he told him not. <coughs> So I want you to see, Miss Bakar, that he got a new heart. He received a new heart. Now let's go on to what is what the command was for him. And let's go to Samuel thirteen eight. Here's the command. What he was supposed to do. Remember back in verse 10? I mean, verse uh, chapter 10, we talked about he was supposed to wait seven days for Samuel to come and offer up the burnt offering. So it, re it reiterates it here. And he tarried seven days according to the set, of, set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. <clears throat> so you see this? It's, it's that waiting time that gets us sometimes. We, we've got to understand that they that wait upon Yahuwah shall renew their strength. When you're in a place of wait... You can't move forward. You can't move backwards. You simply got to wait for the instructions. And people are going to scatter. People are going to do what they're going to do. But you, if the Father has you in a position of a weight, that's what you have to do. Can't be anxious for nothing. You've got to be in that state of weight and let him bring the instructions. How many times have we moved too quickly when we're in that spirit of weight? I know it's happened to me. And you move quickly and next thing you know, you find out, man, I shouldn't have moved. I should have waited and listened for the voice of Yahuwah. 
Okay, now let's see his disobedience. And it says, And Shaul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and a peace offering. So he brings a Ola and a, a Shima. Shimmy. Now, who was supposed to give this offering? The prophet, priest Samuel. But now, because it didn't happen when Shaul wanted it to happen, and the people were scattered, he took it upon himself that this is what he's going to do. And says, and he offered the burnt offering. Now, if you know anything about the burnt offering, when you look up the offering, Ola, here it goes. A step or collective, uh, a step, usually a holocaust, but here it is, it means to ascend. As to go up and smoke, a step, collectively stairs ascending. So this is him, he was given the offering that he wasn't commanded to give. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of the offering of the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Shaul went out to meet him that he might salute him. So you should have waited. Now, in this one, you don't I don't see any evidence where he admitted he was wrong. Because remember, forgiveness is based on asking. So if you don't ask, how can you get forgiveness? So we're going to go to his judgment. And let's look at verse, we'll start with verse 11. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Shaul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me. Now look at this. They were scattered from him. <laughs> that it came and thou comest not within the days appointed. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mish. Uh, this one, let's see. This is Miknash. Miknash. Therefore, I, therefore said I, the Philistines will come down, nail upon me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto Yahuwah. Now look at this. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. Now notice what Samuel says. And Samuel said unto Shaul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of Yahuwah thy Elohim, which he commanded thee. For now would Yahuwah have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever but now thy kingdom shall not continue and Yahuwah has sought a man after his own heart and Yahuwah has commanded him to be captain or leader over his people because thou has not kept that which Yahuwah commanded thee now so right at the point of disobedience another was selected to be captain. Now, notice it didn't happen that very day, but in the mind and in the eyes of Yahuwah, Saul was rejected. He he was he was finished. He wasn't going to be the man anymore because of this disobedience. You see nowhere where he asks for forgiveness. You don't even see any remorse here. He gives excuses like many folks do. You know, um, because this didn't happen, because that didn't happen, I forced myself to do it. See, 
that's the one thing you know when when you talk about the father know your heart he really 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 knows your heart so he said look I sought me another and just he was disobedient and we're gonna we're gonna find out he had a now see even after you get a new heart, Miss Baca, you still have to walk in obedience. He prophesied. He did all these, um, got all these other signs, and, and we'll call them signs of wonders because things just things were just happening for him. Then when it came down to being obedient, he faltered. And we know, and we'll see here as we read, how the Father ranks obedience. So when we talk about the spirit of disobedience, it's within your power my power to be obedient it's a choice there are no excuses there's no casting blame on somebody else that someone else made me do it if you know and understand then it's on you to be obedient now let's look at King Shaul's number two example Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 15 chapter. This stuff is serious. Now, let's read here what he says. This is, we'll read the, um, the command. And Samuel said unto Shaul, Yahuwah sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel, Yisrael. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of Yahuwah. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, I remember that which Abimelech did to Israel, Amalek did to Israel, how he did lay wait for him in the way when he came up from Mitzrayim, Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So what was his instruction? Now just think about it. How It's been a while since that came out of Egypt or Mitraim. Father don't forget nothing. So now he's supposed to go up and render punishment or judgment upon Amalek because of what they did when they came when uh children of Yashrael came out of Egypt. And his instruction was not to spare anything, to kill everything. Pretty clear instruction. <laughs> Some of the instructions that the Father give us is pretty clear. But let's find out how this works out. So let's go down to the seventh verse. And let's read what he did. And Shaul smote the Amalekites from Habiah la until thou camest to Shur that is over against Egypt and he took Agog the king of the Amalekites alive up oh, red flag and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword but Shaul and the people spared Agog and 
the best of the sheep, another red flag, and of the oxen, another red flag, and the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. So, go back to his instruction. And while you're doing this, this is self-examination time. Go back to some of the instructions that the Father has given you. Did you perform exactly what he said? He told you to kill everything. He said utterly destroy everything. Now, so what happened to people, they'll do partial and then proclaim that they've done everything when actually... They didn't do everything. So let's keep reading. Then came the word of Yahuwah unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Shaul to be king. For he is turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. So this was hit the voice of Yahuwah giving him instructions. Because remember it talks about that we have to follow his voice. There's written commands and then there's some commands that he give you by his voice. And it grieved Samuel and he cried unto Yahuwah all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Shaul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Shaul come to Carmel. And behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Shaul and Shaul said unto him, Blessed be thou of Yahuwah. I have performed the commandment of Yahuwah. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this voice or be, uh, beating of the sheep or batting of the sheep in my ear and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? That's the evidence that he didn't keep the commands. And, and Shaul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites for the people now he was given the commandment so it was his responsibility to execute those commandments and any person that didn't follow those commandments he should have taken care of but notice what he does he cast blame remember he had excuses on his last disobedience disobedience he's got excuses on this one too but excuses Miss Picard don't cut it trust me father ain't up for excuses then uh, let's, let's go back up and Shaul said they have um, brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice. Now listen to this. Man, this gets deeper and deeper. We're going to take what the Father told us to destroy. We kept them so we could sacrifice it to him. To sacrifice unto Yahuwah thy Elohim. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Shaul, Stay. And I will tell thee what Yahuwah has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, So I'm going to keep reading because it's still a part. When thou has little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Yisrael, and Yahuwah anointed thee king over Israel, or Yisrael? And Yahuwah sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Now, 
Notice, he sent you on a journey. That word journey there is Derek. Is the way. Okay, it's a road. A course of life. So, all of us, Miss Baka, are on a Derek or a course of life. A journey. That he's going to try our obedience. Will you be obedient or not? Remember, he said he's going to do that in Deuteronomy 8. This keeps coming back over and over and over again to see if you will obey or not. That's the key. What's in your heart? He's going to bring it out and lay it out plain. What's in your heart? And following the written Torah and following his voice, Mr. Bacot is so important. So important. And let's keep reading. Wherefore then doest thou not obey the voice of Yahuwah, but dost fly upon the spoils? And does evil in the sight of Yahuwah? And Shaul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of Yahuwah, and have gone the way. See that now is translated, up there was translated journey. Here's translated way. Gone the way which Yahuwah sent me, and have brought a God, the king of the Amalekites, of the um, Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people, how many of us blaming other folks for where we're at? Take ownership. That's, your, that's, that's what you got to do today. Take ownership for where you are. Accept the punishment. Accept the judgment. Instead of blaming others. Then you will find you'll be able to move forward a little better. What I did was my fault. I got myself in this predicament. I can't point the finger at nobody else. It was my decision. Now through obedience from now henceforth. I can work myself out of this. Yeah, I'll feel the pain of judgment and punishment, but through obedience, I can come out of this. But the people took the spoil, sheep and oxen, and chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto Yahuwah, thy Elohim, and Gilgal. And Samuel said, now this is what I want you to pay attention to. Have Yahuwah as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of Yahuwah? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken, that word hearken there means listen. Kashab, see? Kashab to prick up the ears. Then the fat of rams. So if you want to improve your situation, obedience is better than sacrifice, and to listen or hearken better than the fat of rams. But let me tell you what rebellion is. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now what happens when someone is in witchcraft? What was the commandment? Suffer not a witch to live. That's right. So what is rebellion? <coughs> bitterness, rebellion. Now, it says it comes from 
the uh, 30 4784 to be bitter to rebel change be disobedient now let's go back now it's a mem a yo and a resh and it's may see this is the may and then re may re now the mem is chaos the yod is hand or arm head so there's chaos in your hand or your work and in your head that's rebellion so your head and your hand got nothing but chaos and it's like witchcraft or divination and stubbornness Oh yeah, some yeah, some stubborn. Look at that. Even after he's been told a couple of times that he was disobedient, he's still clinging to his story. I obeyed. I obeyed. I obeyed. When he he wasn't disobedient, disobedient. He was disobedient. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of Yahuwah he has also rejected thee from being king so he got put out and his punishment he's rejected let's read some more of his punishment let's go down to uh, well let's look at forgiveness See if we can find any. And Shaul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Now after he has re talks about being rejected, now he, now oh the story changes. I have sinned. After you've been caught. For I have transgressed the commandments of Yahuwah, the commandment of Yahuwah. And thy words because I feared the people now he still cast in blame and obeyed their voice in his heart like many of us we still cast blame for our own disobedience and guess where that's going to get us? Nowhere. Now he says, Now therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, turn again with me, that I may worship Yahuwah. And Samuel said unto Shaul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah has rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid upon laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and rent and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, Yahuwah has rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and has given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than you. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent for he is not a man that he should lie then he said I have sinned yet honor me now I pray thee before the elders of my people for Israel and turn again with me that I may worship Yahuwah thy Allah so Samuel turned again after Saul, Shaul, and Shaul worshipped Yahuwah. So Yahuwah had already rejected him. Didn't matter what went forth from this point forward. He had been disobedient. His punishment was issued. 
in Yahuwah's eyes, he was no longer king. He was rejected. Even though he was physically king, in the eyes of Yahuwah, right at that moment, he was finished. So, I don't even know if we can even call this forgiveness. So, we've, we've seen his punishment. Now, let's go over to chapter 16 and look at the other part of judgment. This is quite interesting. I, at least I think so. 16 verse 14. Now this is what we don't want to happen to us because of our disobedience. But the Ruach of Yahuwah departed from Shaul. And an evil spirit, Ruach from Yahuwah, troubled him. And Shaul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil Ruach from Elohim troubleth thee. Let our Adon now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player of the heart. Now, this brings out an a interesting point. I found uh, an interesting website. It's called Carming calmingheart.com and they play some wonderful music on the heart to scripture they, they'll they be reading scripture and it has such a great calming and meditation effect so uh, if you'd like to know the website you can just email me at info at living branch.org for those of us that pray um is, is great music to have. And notice what this harp can do. It's playing of the harp. So music can go both ways. It can influence us in a good way. It can influence us in a bad way. And it shall come to pass that when the evil Ruach from Yahuwah, from Elohim, is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Shaul said unto his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Yesse, Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain and a mighty, valiant man, a man of war and prudent in matters and comely person. And Yahuwah is with him. Wherefore Shaul sent messengers unto Jesse, or Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey laden with uh, bread and a bottle of wine, a kid, and sent them by David his son to Shaul. And David came, or Daud came to Shaul, and stood before him. He loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And Shaul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when evil, when the evil Ruach, or spirit from Alakim, was upon Shaul, that David took in heart and played with his hand. So Shaul was refreshed and was well. And the evil spirit departed from him. So this playing of the heart has some powerful effects. But the whole key, Miss Baka, is don't get in that position when somebody got to play a heart to remove this, the evil spirit that the father was sending to you. Stay in obedience. Now, we're going to go on. I uh, got a couple more. Two more examples. They're really not that long, but one I really want to kind of um, look at because many people misuse this one. And that's King Solomon or Shlomo. So let's look at what he was commanded. And we'll read um, the first through the third verse. Then we'll go back over and look at something else. 
But King Slomo and Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Am Ammonites, Edomites, Zodan Zodians, and the Hittites, of the nations concerning, listen to this, which Yahuwah said unto the children of Yisrael, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your hearts after their mighty ones. And Shlomo clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart, turned away his heart. Now, you'll hear many people talk about this whole situation and talk about, well, he failed because he had many wives. No, that's not what it says. The ones that turned his heart were the strange wives, the foreign wives that worshipped other deities or other mighty ones. They're the ones that turned his heart away from the father because the father told them, told him not to take the wives of other nations because they would turn his heart. So it's not many wives or many concubines or or whatever he had in his house, it was those that worship the foreign deities or mighty ones. So we have to get his disobedience straight. His disobedience was taking what Yahuwah told him not to take. Okay, so let's look at uh, his disobedience in 4 through 8. For it came to pass when Shlomo was old that his wives turned away his heart after other mighty ones. And his heart was not perfect, meaning he did not keep the commandments with Yahuwah, his Elohim, as his heart as the heart of David his father. For Solomon now listen to what he did. This is what his foreign wives did. Okay, we're not talking about the ones in his house that were Hebrews and that worshipped Yahuwah Elohim, but his foreign wives. For Shlomo went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the uh, Zidonians, Zidonians, and after Milka, the abomination of the Amalekites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahuwah and went not full, fully after Yahuwah as did his, did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemos, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem and to Melek the abomination of the children of Ammon and likewise did he for all and then notice what it says his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their deities now I had a chance when I was in Israel to go to Lachish we took, uh, there's some pictures on my Facebook there from Lachish. And we actually saw, you can still, Lachish is not debated. Everybody know that's where Solomon built his palace. And you can actually still, still see the altar that Solomon or Shlomo built to the queen of heaven. You can still see it there where he built this altar and they worship the queen of heaven. So these strange wives. That's why we have to get our story straight. Is what caused. Him in his old age. To. Be disobedient. 
Now, let's look um let's look in verse 13 here. We don't hear again, you really don't see you no know, the repentance that's that's really going to turn things. But this is what he said. How be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy uh, son for David, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem or Jerusalem sake, which I have chosen. So he told him what he was going to do. You look at verse 9, starting up here. And Yahuwah was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael, which had appeared unto him twice. Now this is this is what you've seen me. You've seen my esteem. You've seen all of my magnificent countenance, but yet and still you gonna sin. And notice verse ten. It had commanded him concerning this thing. That he should not go after other mighty ones, but he kept not that which Yahuwah commanded. Wherefore, if Yahuwah said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Nevertheless, in, the, in, in thy days, I will not do it for Daoud thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of thy the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy to thy son for David thy servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. So this is just the mercy of Yahuwah. Here. And even though he didn't do it until reading the kingdoms, you you start looking down here. As soon as that disobedience happened, here, here in verse 14, and Yahuwah stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. When you were when you want to walk in disobedience, the father can stir up an adversary. And we steadily trying to blame the devil. Oh, the devil fight me. The devil this, the devil that. When it was our disobedience and the father stirred up an adversary against us because of our disobedience. Okay, we're down to our last one, Ms. Baka. We're going to look at King of Yehuda. So, we're going to just preempt this one with, most of us know this, Exodus 20. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah thy Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other mighty ones before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth water under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I Yahuwah the Elohim am a jealous El visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me okay now let's go over to Deuteronomy because this is the commandment that he's given in verse 9. When thou art come into the land which Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Pretty straightforward. So let's go to second first Kings chapter fourteen.
And we're going to look down at verse 21. This is Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the son of Slomo, reigned in Yehuda. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahuwah did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother, mother's name was Nama. And <laughs> look at this. Ammonitus. And Yehuda did evil. Now, this is why I said the. Uh, this is the tribe of Yehuda or Judah did evil in the sight of Yahuwah they provoked him to jealousy with their sin which they had committed above all their fathers had done now listen to this for they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill now I've been to uh, I've been to Israel, and when you're up there at Mount Zion, because that's where they were, they were in the southern part of Israel, down in Tel Aviv. If you look around Mount Zion, you'll see nothing but mountains. There's hills everywhere. So to actually get a concept of what they're talking about on every high hill. There are a lot of hills there. So this was pretty bad. And under every green tree. And there was also sodomites in the land. Now what is a sodomite? Let's let's look that up. Just, just for your... Notice what it says. Sacred person. Technically, okay, a male devotee. Prostitution. Hmm, male prostitute, interesting. And they did according to all the abomination of the nations which Yahuwah cast out before the children of Israel. Okay, did you see that? Now let's look at, the, you see no forgiveness in here. Let's read this punishment. It came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Mitzrayim, came up against Jerusalem, and he took away the treasures of the house of Yahuwah and the treasures of the king's house. He even took away all, and he took away all the shields of gold which Shlomo had made. And King Rehoboam made in their stead brazen shields and committed them unto the hands of the chief of the guards which kept the door of the king's house. It was so when king when the king went out into the house of Yahuwah that the guard bare them and brought them back into the guest chambers. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Yahuwah of, of Yehuda. So, Ms. Bukah, Forgiveness is not a guarantee. You have to ask because we see, we saw in the examples, some of them didn't even ask. So you, you have no record of forgiveness. Then punishment. If there's disobedience, there's going to be punishment and judgment. So when we go back over and we read in Hebrews, there remaineth no more sacrifice. When we willfully sin, it bears out in Scripture. So when you know better, you can look out. Now the last little thing I want to cover as we uh, conclude that I want you to see. You've got to see this. Faith and disobedience don't mix. Proverbs 28 9 he that turneth away his ear from hearing the Torah 
the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So, not even listening, turning your ear from it. Because in order to do it, you got to hear it. And we know that principle is set forth in, 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 in Romans, where Shaul talks about, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Elohim. You've got to hear the word of Elohim in order to have faith. And guess what? The faith is in what he's written and spoken. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Allah he must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now James or Yaakov set out a good principle in chapter 2 verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have words. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So your works and your faith go hand in hand, and they must mesh up with Torah. There's no way around it. Diso if you're operating in disobedience, you're not operating in faith. Point blank. The two just don't mix. They're like all oil and water. So my prayer, Mr. Bacar, is that you will operate in faith and be obedient, and that you will seek out him in every situation so I pray I pray this lesson has helped uh, I think we're gonna this will be the conclusion of our disobedience uh, spirit the rock of disobedience and uh, I'm thinking about I'm not sure yet next week I might deal with the spirit of familiarity um, that one has crossed my mind so we'll see how it goes and as the father leads um so miss because you haven't already joined our bookmarker witnessing team and we'll send these out to you won't charge you anything but of course if you know you want to make a donation donations are always accepted we try to make these free because we don't want uh we don't charge for posters we don't charge for the bookmarkers because we want to get these in the hands of people that will pass them out but then there's the others that the Father has blessed to help us so that we can buy these bookmarks. And we say, tote out for those um, and for their offerings. Now, if you would like to support us, you can go to our website, uh, HebrewFoundations.org. You can do it by PayPal. And this is our PayPal address, donations at HebrewFoundation.org. You can send it in through the mail. This is our mailing address. Just make any check or money order out to Living Branch Hebrew Assembly. Or you might want to use our online donation tool. If you use the online donation tool, this is what it looks like. It's secure. Um, it does have a secure login. You can do a quick give, which means you don't have to register. But if you're giving by check or uh, savings or a checking account, you want to register as a new user then you can go in and give using those methods you can also give using credit cards and debit cards alright Miss Bacoth Toda for joining us and we're praying that you will operate in the Ruach of obedience and follow the things that the Father has outlined in his commandments Hearken diligently unto his word. Do the things he has told you so that you can lead a life of shalom. There's no peace in disobedience. So follow his voice and he will lead you by the still waters. So let's pray, Miss Baka. Father, we say toda for these lessons. We ask you, Father, to help those, Father, that were teetering on the line of disobedience i pray father you put in their hearts to be obedient let these examples be examples to them to what happens when we walk in disobedience put an obedient ruach in them father that they might follow your laws your statutes your commandments your voice 
and be with them. Strengthen them in the name of Mashiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. I mean. All right, Miss Baka. We want to thank you for joining our Shabbat lesson. Um, and, you know, what I definitely want you to do is make this the great Shabbat, greatest Shabbat ever. And for now, we say Shabbat Shalom.